Explore Tulsa is an opportunity to see behind the scenes of Tulsa's most unique places. To hear the stories of real people who are doing fantastic things and who love living here. We look at the people, places, and events that make Tulsa home. Welcome to a few minutes of Exploring Tulsa. Hi, welcome to Explore Tulsa, the show about everything Tulsa and the people who make it a great place to live. I'm Austin Morton, and we're glad you joined us again this week. And I'm Trish Whitmer. We have a great show lined up, so let's get started. Austin, we did a segment a few weeks ago at the Vintage Sewing Center and Museum. And we thought we knew going in what a sewing center and museum was going to look like. But boy, were we wrong. There were so many absolutely fascinating stories there that we decided to tell one of those stories to give you a glimpse of what this new museum will be for Tulsa. A lady called me in Arkansas and she said she had a machine uh, she wanted to donate. So when I got there, I, I've seen these cabinets before closed up and a few of them opened, but this one was a little different because it had this small machine on it. Now normally, if you could afford this cabinet, which this was like buying a, a, an average home, this is the machine you bought with it. This was Singer's finest machine of the day. And there would be no reason for you not to have that machine in this cabinet. The problem with this is, this is considered like a pinto of a sewing machine. There was many machines between this one and the one I picked up quality-wise. It being in this case, it just didn't make any sense. I asked her, I said, well, it's extremely rare that the wool pad is all still there because the Moz, 144 years ago, we had very little protection. And all throughout the continental United States, everything wool had to be protected. That's why we had the cedar chest. And I questioned, I said, well, it's really odd that that would survive all those years. And she said, well, that has to do with why it has a small machine. Her great-grandma, great-great-grandma, was a petite woman and she weighed 88 pounds. That machine I held up is a beast. It's heavy, heavy. And she didn't want that big a machine. And then you would think, well, it's in a cabinet. What difference does it make? Well, this lady lived in a, the only place in the continental United States that didn't have the moss. And that was Flagstaff, Arizona for the elevation and the desert west of it. And just for that one environment, there was no moths, and that's why this survived. I'm sure the, the manufacturers, I know they did, they said, why in the world are we sending out a pinto in our mansion? It's going to make us look bad, is what it's going to do. So what Singer did is they said, well, let's do some modification on this, and let's give her some luxury, and let's put a hand crank on it. So they put a hand crank on it. Why is that a luxury item? And I'll tell you why. Uh, ladies back then, they always kept their fingers clean, the fingernails, and they always kept them trimmed so they wouldn't snag their fabrics because it was so expensive. On a regular treadle, you're always having to grab the wheel. Even when they're brand new, that metal is coming off on your hands and it stains the clothes you're working on. So they always had to clean their hands and keep washed up by having a hand crank and changing the design on the Pittman, she didn't have to do that. She, instead of reaching up and grabbing the wheel and maybe doing all that, she could reach over in pure luxury and do this. So Singer says, okay, we gave you, now our machine is better. But there was something else that she wanted. And what she wanted was the ability that you know, she lived in the desert, and, and it's hot. So this machine... is a convertible unit, and she could take it outside and sew in the shade. In the desert, you want to get out of your house and go... So this was to where she could take it outside. And there's a case for it. And there's also... The nice thing about this machine is that it has all the the original parts because it was a one family 
but this machine actually come with the original scissors from uh, way back then. This is, um, it's 144 years old. I'm thinking the year is, because you can get the date. This is 1874, uh, January 7th. So you can get the actual day that they were, they were made. It's as close to a one-off as you can get because of the circumstances there. There's a few of them that do have the wool pads, but they won't have the small machine. And they won't have the hand crank or the, the really cool pitman arm set up. So it's kind of a, a really, really rare machine. That place is so full of those kinds of discoveries and stories. Make sure you ask for the guided tour when you go. You won't be sorry. And look what they made just for me, my own apron, and signed by WK himself. Thank you so much. Well, that's perfect for our next segment. Keep that apron handy. Oh, I didn't even think of that. We're heading to the kitchen with a fascinating young chef. Next, when Explore Tulsa returns in a moment. Our most beautiful 4K HDR TV. Easily manage your cables for even a clean rear look. It hangs flat on the wall, just like a piece of art. Yet its slimness creates astounding images. Experience new discoveries with Android TV by getting instant access to everything you need. Introducing the latest Sony 4K HDR TV. The key to getting a firm grip on your health is knowing exactly what it is you're doing to your body and how it's affected. Don't ever stop learning. Dr. Mark and I have just published our newest book, Fork Your Diet, and want to share our knowledge and experience with you in an easy to read but very informative manner. Easy to read, yes, but life-changing with chapters like Dodging Diabetes and Food for Thought on Alzheimer's and Dementia. Plus the disease of depression. In the book, we address the problems of dieting, fasting, and accountability. Let me read you a quote from the book. In today's America, if you're fit and healthy with a normal body composition, you're radically different. Be, Be radically, radically different. different. You can find the book and so much more at SherwoodWellness.tv. See you on the radical side. Trish, Tolsons love the food culture here. We do indeed, and we have featured many of our finest restaurants over the years. And we'll continue to, but this next segment isn't about a restaurant, but about an incredibly talented young chef who is making a name for herself nationwide. And has written another book, this one speaking directly to teens. We spent a little time dishing it up with Chef Remy. Well, I actually was in, I've been in the kitchen since I was like four years old, and that wasn't really, I was not cooking then. Uh, mainly I was eating after what my mom was making in the kitchen. And then one day she's like, you really need to do something productive here. So I started um, helping her out by mixing salad, washing vegetables, I was four, I was a toddler. And so um, that's when I really just fell in love with the process of cooking um, and really working with food and sort of learning how this vegetable or this mix of vegetables can turn into this salad or um, this other dish. And so that's really where my love of food came from. And so um, from that age on, I was, oh, and some sweet potato, forgot about that. Um, from that, from then on, I was in the kitchen a lot more. And so over the years, my mom started teaching me more techniques like sauteing and roasting and baking. And so then by the time I was eight years old, I could actually make a meal. And granted at the time, it was, mo it was meatloaf as my entree <laughs> and um, a summer salad, which has hearts of palm in it, so. Um, well, for, so first I started off with my cooking show, which was Cook Time with Remy, and that was just based out of my kitchen, web series, very 
hobby-ish at first, but then we got sponsorships, we got partnerships, and it wasn't a hobby anymore. And then um, Chef Club Box is actually a meal kit subscription box where we deliver local ingredients um, that are kid-friendly recipes. We really want to focus it on the kid aspect and really empowering them to get in the kitchen and take control. And so all of our recipes are very easy to follow. I have a video tutorial for them so they can, so they can follow it step by step so that way they're not lost along the process. We're really trying to create um, this very supportive place where people who are just starting out um, in the kitchen can go to each other like, you know, I've tried this recipe, what do you think I should do? And so it's really a way, I think it's sort of a hub for young chefs. That's how I like to think of it. So it's a very family friendly box. And so um, all of our recipes, of course, are made that kids can make them, but also anyone at another age can make them as well. And they're really fun and they're delicious and they're healthy for you. So like, why not make them? My first one was called Global Cooking for Kids, and I actually took one country from each continent and then made a meal out of that country's cuisine. And my second cookbook is sort of an extension of that. We did 80 recipes. Um, uh, we call it taking a trip around the world and 80 recipes, you know, cute little cliche thing. And um, with that one, I actually was on Chopped, and so that publishing company also approached me after I was on Chopped. It's like, we think you'd be great to do this cookbook, and I was like, Sounds like a good idea to me. And so that one also took about a year-ish in the process. And um, this one I think is a lot more interesting because not only do we have a lot more countries to cover, we only did like one dish per country, but um, I actually got to, when my last book with Antarctica, we did smoothies and soups. So it was like basic cold weather food. But on this one, I got to talk to um, a chef who was um, doing a research, actually no, she was doing a cleanup project on Antarctica. And so she lived there for three months. And so she um, wrote a book about it. And so after I read her book and then I um, emailed her. And so it was so amazing getting in contact with her. And I got an interviewer and I was like, oh, that's my favorite part of the book. So um, I'm really, really, really passionate about the box right now because a lot of the time I've really been in a more service based industry with the TV show and doing cooking appearances and doing speaking appearances. And I've had the cookbooks, of course, and like the recipe lines, but this is not really, they haven't really been something that um, I feel like actively like engage kids with. Um, food or cooking as much as I wanted to before and so with this box I feel like it's really really pushing on that aspect because it has chef in the name which also stands for cook healthy exercise frequently to embody the holistic healthy lifestyle. As I said I really it's kids that really matter to me and so sort of having that moment where I see someone who has been um, looking up to me and sort of following my footsteps in the kitchen and proactively been um, doing that it's just it's a reward beyond, I don't know, like beyond words I can say. Tulsa is very fortunate to have such a talented young chef start her career here. Remy has so much in front of her, and we're going to be watching as she moves forward with her dreams. She's so fun to talk to and so articulate, it's hard to believe she's just finishing high school. I know, right? Two books, a cooking show, guest appearances, a thriving business, and adorable? That's a great combination. Well, that made me hungry, so it's snack time for me while you take a break, but come right back for more Explore Tulsa. Like parents have a thing, when it gets too quiet in the home, we're worried, you know what I mean? I don't like silence in the home because it, it just feels dead. Silence, that just doesn't feel like a creative place to me. Turning on music in your house is almost like turning on the lights in your house. Music makes mundane stuff better. It's never too late to discover new things. You just never know what song's gonna come on next. <laughs> Silence is probably the enemy of a happy home. Come here for yourself at Video Revolution. Take charge of your health. We are what we put into our bodies. 
We approach medicine from a unique standpoint. Rather than treating only the symptoms of an illness, we work to find the root cause and promote wellness of the entire body. Our clinic offers complete assessment and treatment programs, including hormone replacement therapy, osteopathic manipulative therapy, and genetic DNA testing. It all starts with a medical evaluation. Contact us today to begin your path to wellness. Welcome back for more Explore Tulsa, the place where we honor entrepreneurs. We love to do just that. And in researching for our show this week, we found a young woman who has that spirit and is at the helm of not one, but two thriving downtown businesses. One old and one all new as we talk with Sean at The Goods Bodega. This building is super special. The George Kaiser Foundation renovated the building and um, it's housing the Tulsa Artist Fellowship. I may have said that wrong, but the people who apply to live here and do residency and work on their art are actually living upstairs in the building. And in the back of the building is their artist studios. So that's super special. And then the front is the retail space. I think there's probably some thought that the retail space will help sustain the building by um, you know, utilizing those as commercial properties. So it's neat, it's a very full building. So, you know, upstairs actually residence and then all the storefronts in the front. Yeah, I mean a bodega traditionally, um, say if you visited Manhattan or something, would be a small store like similar size to this. So it would be more crowded probably with inventory, but it would just like supply the neighborhood or the offices nearby with like the things that they need, the convenience items they need similar to a convenience store here, but you know, they don't do the gas. I've always been interested in food and food culture, and then, you know, the lack of having the store down here, so that was just kind of a natural fit. I did end up operating a store a few years ago in downtown, you know, servicing the food need as well, and that did fail, so it was like a big learning curve for me to like figure out what I did wrong and like be able to correct those mistakes. Well, I hadn't known her before our interview, um, and she just seems like really level-headed and calm. Um, I mean, she put this whole thing together and I know they were, it was like very fast-paced getting it, getting the build-out done and everything. Um, so I just like that she can just take charge and make stuff happen. So I'm not really sure how I ended up in two businesses. I think that it was just, I like to get stuff done and, <laughs> and when I see something that needs to be done, I step in and try to do it. So, um, you know, there was a need for food downtown and the original operator of Dwelling Spaces was ready to kind of step back and I somehow got thrown into the mix and I was like really excited to continue her legacy of like supporting local and providing local retail and downtown retail. So. That just kind of happened organically. I have a kitchen manager and he makes a lot of prepared foods in-house so we do um, a lot of fresh foods because we don't have like a fryer or like a grill. So a lot of our things are fresh foods like tabbouleh salads or like uh, quinoa things or items that are generally healthy options for people who are down here and quick grab-and-go items so like tuna salads and stuff like that. And we just supply like drinks and snacks and you know those items that when you're in a hurry that you need and then also for people who live downtown and they need an onion to finish dinner or they need some items to get through like lunch tomorrow or you know getting kids fed for you know whatever reason like if they hadn't been prepared with a larger store trip you know they could they could make that happen with what we have here. I divide my time. I stay busy, but I'm here for lunch and most of the you know morning times I'm in the bodega and in the afternoons I'll go over to the box yard and see what's going on over there. The box yard's pretty special because it's all independently owned, you know, shops and retail everybody in there, like you you know all the owners. So similar to this archer building, same thing. Everybody here, you get to know them and you know the person behind the stores, so it's pretty special to be involved in two independent projects like that aren't commercial at all. She really just puts Tulsa before herself um, and Dwelling Spaces was such a big name and a big icon for the downtown community so she wanted to keep that going and then also had her bodega 
you know, doing the work on that to get that going. So, I mean, it's just really cool to, I love entrepreneurship and I just admire that someone can just take the reins and make stuff happen. So Dwelling Spaces is a retail store that's been open for 11, and 11 years and some change. And it originally was furniture, fixtures, and um, things for your house, hence the name Dwelling Spaces. But the lady that was operating it, the owner, uh, Mary Beth, started making some t-shirts or doing some different things that were supporting local artists and supporting local art. And so she started realizing that there was a need for somewhere that sold local items. And so she had a focus like selling local art and like things that were made in Oklahoma or things that celebrated Tulsa. So that's kind of how it became known. When this location opened, it's been more of like a park life, going outdoors, hanging with the family. Um, so we kept our local, you know, with the t-shirts and the different products and things like that. We definitely kept that focus in our coffee shop. It's all local coffee. But as far as, you know, let's go grab a blanket and hang out at Guthrie Green. We wanted to provide the chairs and, you know, the blankets and the bags to hold your drinks, you know, so that you could just go make a day of it. I would say here is a very functioning space that is like providing something to the neighborhood and the box shard is almost more of a destination space for somebody who is going down to shop and look around like on the weekend or from out of town. It's more of a hangout spot. It's a really neat place to go visit and get ice cream and the patio has a nice bar, you know, you can sit and have a drink and look at the Tulsa skyline, which is really nice. People will see the box shard on the news or in the paper and they want to come see what's new in downtown. Um, so they'll make a trip and come from an outside city and so we're definitely getting a different clientele of people. Here people are specifically coming to the shop to see what's going on, what's new in Tulsa. So, you know, my goal is to hopefully leave Tulsa better than I found it, you know, like the Girl Scout motto or something. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to help provide the neighborhood with, you know, my bodega and try to do what I think needed to be done because I need items done. I've utilized the store a lot myself. You know, just when you need something, it's really difficult to get it always if you're down here. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have anywhere in, it, we're still building, so we don't have like groceries and we don't have groceries here either, but you know, where, where you can just pop in and pick up a quick snack. I mean, there was times when I was eating dinner with my family and you know, I asked the server, I was like, is there any way I can buy like just two pieces of bread so I can make lunch for my daughter tomorrow? <laughs> you know, just like, cause I didn't want to get in my car and drive four miles or five miles when it's not on the way home because there's nothing on the way home because there's no stores down here. So, you know, the food desert thing is real. We're obviously not a solution to that. We're just, you know, maybe a little part of help, helping the solution. I'm definitely a Tulsa advocate. Like I recently moved downtown and I walk everywhere. Transit, public transit's really important to me. Um, so just me living the lifestyle that I hope to see a future Tulsa, that's what I strive for. And so Dwelling Spaces has really opened up that door for me to allow me to be here to live downtown and just be right in the middle of everything. So yeah, my, my goal with this is just to do something for the city and like, you know, help Tulsa progress and like help get more people downtown, filling up these old buildings and, um, you know, provide local independent retail, which I think is important right now in the Amazon era and some of those items, you know, the, the sci-fi part of me that gets scared that in 20 years, there's not going to be stores to go to anymore because everything's going to be delivered to you. Kind of, you know, it's not what I want the future to look like. So I hope to be a part of showing people what quality independent retail can look like and, you know, kind of bringing it back to where we were before Walmart and Amazon. I love the box yard, and I'm so happy that Dwelling Spaces is in good hands. It's such a fun place to spend some time, either for a quick coffee or a creative Tulsa gift. And I thought a bodega was an Italian hot dog of some sort, so I learned something too. <laughs> That's going to be a great addition to downtown life, and we wish both businesses all the best. We're going to take a break and come back for more in a moment. 
Hot dog? Really? Come on, man. 600 million people from over 238,000 miles away watched what no other person had ever done before. Neil Armstrong became the first man to step on the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Television brings us more than just entertainment. It brings us history. History that changes our lives. Sony and Video Revolution take you there. From space travel to world championships. Tomorrow's technology today. 4K smart TVs and the largest flat screens available. Now more than ever, you have the best seat in the world when history is made. Video Revolution. On the northwest corner, 71st and Lewis. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 trains to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa's best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner & Associates. The box stores have come and gone, but Video Revolution is 35 years strong. Come see why. Video Revolution is the largest independent consumer electronics store in the region. For 35 years, we continue to have low, low prices and high customer service. Top brands like Sony, Samsung, LG, Yamaha, Sonos, Klipsch, and many more. Better than box stores in so many ways. Come experience the difference. The Video Revolution difference on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Hello again everyone, I'm Chris Lincoln with Oklahoma Sports Scene. I'm Gil Cloud. And I'm J.V. Haney. And you're watching Explore Tulsa. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us each week as we look around Tulsa and meet the most interesting people. Yes, thank you for being a part of what we do each week. We couldn't do this without our sponsors, so we take a moment to say thanks to Drs. Michelle and Mark Sherwood at Functional Medical Institute, home of Whole Body Wellness and a video revolution where you'll find all your home and business technology solutions. Thanks also to Dr. Zellner Associates, Tulsa's best eye care value. If you want to explore a little on your own, over 1,600 of our stories are on our YouTube channel. Or go to ExploreTulsa.com, enough to keep you entertained for a long while. A quick shout out to this week's guests, WK at the Vintage Sewing Center and Museum, Chef Remy, and Sean and Renee for helping build up downtown. Get in touch with us with any comments, or if you know of someone who needs to be on here, we're always watching for interesting stories. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time, right here on Explore Tulsa.